Hi, I'm Andrew Baxter. I finished school in 1985 and I'm the Chairman of Publicist Communications. Yeah, I remember early January, you know, getting a letter from Michael Aikman asking me to be one of the prefects. It was a pretty, uh, pretty amazing moment. You were never quite sure whether you were going to, you know, you were going to make that group. I think back then we had about 10 or 15 prefects and, you know, and I look back on that group that were in that prefect study that year and it was an amazing group of people who, who since they've left school, have all done amazing things. Look, in terms of a career, I wasn't quite sure what to do. And I realised after first year uni that doing accounting wasn't exactly what I wanted to do and, and the marketing side was. And I popped out of, um, you know, finishing and graduating in marketing at the end of 1990. I was lucky enough um, to get a job at Gillette. The more I did sales type roles in there, the more I realised marketing was what I wanted to do. But it was an incredible experience learning the sales side. And it's, it's the time I, you know, don't regret doing because it actually taught me a huge amount about being out there with the customer. Just when that move was about to happen, I, uh, I got a phone call from my cousin um, who I was sharing a house with at the time. He and I are the same age and he'd been working for one of the advertising agencies and they'd won the Nintendo account. And uh, he said, oh mate, you should go for the account manager's job, you'd be fantastic at that. And, and, uh, and I went for that job and that first agency role was with a company called Young and Rubicam. They were one of the biggest um, advertising agencies in the world, um, New York based. You know, I had an incredible boss who, who had run other agencies, so I, what a great mentor to have sitting in rooms. But I remember about a year in, he said to me, you don't say much in meetings. And I said, that's because every time I go to say something, you've already said it. You know, I'm 25 years old and you're 45 and had all this experience. He goes, from now on, I'm going to shut up and not say anything in meetings and I want you to talk. And to his credit, um, he did that. It was a great learning for me. That did give me a lot, it gave me a lot of confidence that I was A, in the right industry, but, but B, that um, the, way I, the way I thought strategically about things, um, I was going in the right direction. Some of the best campaigns I've been involved in, some of them go back to the early days when, you know, you're really, really hands-on. Um, you talk about Chupa Chups campaigns that we did in the mid-90s that overnight turned into one of the coolest products to have sticking out of your mouth, and that was the power of um, what advertising can do. And Nintendo, similarly, we, we remember the launch of Nintendo 64 in 1997, and we had Tim Ferguson, the character, sort of replicating the 3D nature and trying to do what, what the game did. They, they were great fun campaigns. You know, things like Rhonda and Katut for Amy. I remember the guys talking about the brief between Amy and, and the agency at Ogilvy had, um, had figured out that all the products within insurance were, had strange names, comprehensive car insurance. They didn't, no one really understood what they meant. So they'd come up with a new product that was going to be called Safe Drivers Reward because we should reward safe drivers. And they then started to turn Rhonda into almost a soap opera because the next part of the campaign had to highlight how much money you'd save by moving to Amy. And so all of a sudden, Rhonda was in Bali. You look so hot today, oh. like a sunrise. You're annoying. There was others when I remember moving back to Ogilvy, Sydney in 2011 to take over as the national CEO and the guys uh, in Sydney office had just presented the idea that became Share a Coke. And, you know, that's now running 80 countries around the world and one of the most successful campaigns Coca-Cola's ever run. And they presented it, the client loved it. But the ability to, what I would call, keep that campaign sold was the difficulty that the team then had. I mean, what do you mean we're not going to have a Coca-Cola logo on the can for a period of time? The whole thing at any point in time over five months could have fallen over and to the team's credit, they kept that sold and it became again one of the most famous campaigns in the world. In end of 2013, I got a call from Publicis out of the blue and I think at the time Ogilvy was probably the number one agency in the country, Publicis was maybe number three. But the people I met were um, incredibly inspiring people and after 10 years at Ogilvy I felt, well maybe you know, this is an opportunity to challenge myself again and, and prove that you can go again in a different in a different manner. So that was tough. You know, I think the emotional side of leaving clients you'd worked with for a long time I and mean, to step into uncharted waters with a new team that I'd have to build was was you know emotionally a tough decision. But I think the rational side of it was, you know, what a great opportunity. Greatest strength from a management style, I think, honest down to earth, but being who you are. I mean, just, there's no point in business being anybody other than yourself. And, uh, and I think, you know, that's a great lesson for a lot of people. I think being resilient 
you know, when we pitch for, for, for new accounts and big accounts, you know, there might be 10 agencies involved, get shortlisted to five, you're down to the last three, you're in some sort of creative shootout, you win some, you lose some, because there's so many great ad agencies in this country. So, you know, that sense of resilience is incredible. You learn a lot of that from school and from sport. One thing I have learned, and I learned it through coaching footy at a reasonably senior level, is to surround yourself with people that think differently to you. The minute you think you know everything, you're gone. Um, you, you can't surround yourself with yes people. I want five different opinions on something and then we'll pick one that we think's right. It doesn't mean making an instant, instant decision. Sometimes a patient decision is a stronger decision. You know, my two philosophies I often give out are uh, one, stress is a waste of time and energy, and two, don't make the same mistake twice. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. It's fine to make one. I think this country is annoyingly bad at the tall poppy thing, waiting for someone to make one mistake. I mean, in Silicon Valley, people make 20 mistakes before they become successful. In this country, we want to knock people down when they make one. I think one thing I can really, really thank Halebury for is they taught us to be incredibly productive. Because I did do sport after school, orchestra one night, maybe the school play as well, you were constantly doing things. And then at the same time, I was usually down at my local athletics club doing training for them. So you had to get the work done. You know, but the big part of what we do in marketing is understanding consumers. And if you don't, if you're not out there talking to people, that's the minute that you lose that intuition for great marketing and great advertising. I think the connection from the school when you left, it was extremely strong. I mean, we'd had this incredible year group of guys um, that went through together. And you know, even to this day, you know, I, I still love the connection of the school. I, I still go back and, and do different things and, you know, happy to um, talk to young kids coming through who want marketing and advertising careers. And so look, I think that connection as you left school, uh, for me, was an extremely strong one.